Today, we're going to be learning about rational exponents. So far, the exponents that we've been considering were integers, negative numbers, zeros, positive numbers, but we never looked at fractions as exponents. For example, if we have something like four to the exponent one over two, what would that be? It's certainly difficult to understand what this would mean, but there is another equivalent form that might help us to understand what this means. Now, this over here is equal to this. So notice how this exponent over here has a numerator of one and a denominator of two. What we end up with is square root of four to the exponent one. So once again, you can see that from the exponent, the denominator is what determined the degree of the root. Of course, since the denominator is two, we have a root of degree two, more commonly known as a square root. And since the numerator is one, we're looking for the square root of four to the exponent one. And of course, the square root of four can be further simplified to two. Great. So if we had something like 16 to the exponent one over two, then this would be the square root of 16 to the exponent one. Of course, that simplifies down to four. And we can say this in a general sense. Notice here what is happening to B and what is happening to A. Now, with that in mind, let's try another example where we specifically try to use this general formula. And you'll notice that it's actually really easy to do. So if we had something like 32 to the exponent three over two, that would just be the square root of 32 to the exponent three. If it helps you to understand exponents better, another way to do this would have been to see this three over two as the same thing as three times one over two. After all, three is equal to three over one. And when you multiply the numerators and the denominators, you would end up at three over two. Now, if you decide to see the exponent as three times one over two, then you might also be able to see that this is essentially a power of a power situation where you have 32 to the exponent three, bracketed to the exponent one over two. And now of course you see the similarities between this example and our very first example where we did four to the exponent one over two. Remember that when we raised four to the exponent of one over two, it was the same thing as simply taking the square root of four. Similarly, if we're raising 32 to the exponent three to the exponent of one over two, then that would be the same as taking the square root of this entire power right here. Awesome. So let's just do one last question. Let's make this a little bit more difficult, but don't let that fool you. This isn't actually as difficult as it might seem. So we have something like this. We see some fractions in the exponents. Well, first, all we have to do is deal with the operators. Negative 12 over seven plus two over seven. Well, that's pretty simple. That's just gonna be negative 10 over seven. Now the question is, what do we do from here? Well, we have already learned what to do with negative exponents. 18 to the exponent negative 10 over seven is gonna be the exact same thing as one over 18 to the exponent 10 over seven. Remember, we can just do one over and take that entire power, dropping that negative sign. Great, now we're almost finished, but we did learn something today. We can put that 18 to the exponent 10 over seven in a different form. Do we need to? Maybe not, but if our teacher wants us to, then maybe we should. So in this situation, we have one over seventh root of 18 to the exponent 10. Now, reversely, if we saw something in its radical form, we should be able to find out its equivalent exponential form as well. 
So if we had something like the fourth root of five to the exponent seven, then of course this can be translated to five to the exponent seven over four. So it becomes pretty obvious then that this formula over here can help us out quite a bit. Just remember that there are two different ways to write the same thing, the same value. So there you have it. Now you know how to interpret powers that have fractions as their exponents. And we will see you in our next video.